want to say to open this discussion is about the significance of knowing Imam. In our case, Imam of our age, Imam Mahdi al-Sharif. We all know that the Prophet said, Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanahi, mata mita tam jahiliya. And all Muslims have narrated this. And there are other versions of this similar to this. Man mata wa laysa lahu imam zaman, or uh, he has no knowledge of his imam. But all say the same thing, that without knowing the leader of your time, who is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would be like a person who died in the age of ignorance, in the age of before Islam. Even if you may be a Muslim, or even you may be a Shia, you know, in the history of Shia, we have Shia who believed up to, for example, thank you, up to the fourth Imam, for example. You know, Zaydis, not uh, some of our own brothers who are Zaydi, but the Zaydis as a sect, they believe up to Imam Zayn al Abidin, alayhi salam, but after Imam Zayn al Abidin, instead of Imam Bakr, they believe in Zayd ibn Ali. Okay? So, if these Zaydis had died just before the martyrdom of Imam Zainul Abidin, they were all right. Yeah? But they survived, then they lost the connection. Otherwise, up to that time, they were okay. They were like us. Some people believed up to Imam Bader, and then they didn't believe Imam Sadat, like Kisamis. Some people believe up to Imam Sadat, then they didn't believe Imam Kazem, like, you know, Ismailis. Some people believe Imam Kazem, they didn't believe Imam Reza, they are Waqafis. Okay? But Alhamdulillah, everyone who believed in Imam Reza is a twelver. Because Imam Reza very clearly established everything. And as you know, one of the titles of Imam Reza is Alimu al Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Imam Sadr established Shia fiqh, and Imam Reza established Shia aqaid. So after them, the Shia identity is completed. So people who were okay up to a certain time, when they were tested and they were not able to find the right connection and direction, they deviated. But what about people like us? Can we say we are okay? Because we know our 12 Imams and therefore no matter what is going to happen, we are not going to lose any Imam. Is it enough for us? Because we have Ma'rif of Imam of our age. I can tell you what is his name. I can tell you who was his father, when he was born, when his labor started, what he's going to do. So I know Imam of our age. The answer is no. This is not the type of Ma'rif which would be sufficient. The ma'rifah of imam of one's age needs at least three things. First, knowing imam in person. Who is imam? Not that there is an imam. No, you must know imam as a person. Second, you must know your age, your zaman, your time. Third, you must know what your Imam wants from you at this particular time. If my knowledge of Imam doesn't help me in understanding what I have to do now, so I don't have direction in my life. I cannot say because I just know Imam Mahdi is Imam of all these you know, centuries, so it's enough. No. What extra I have compared to the people who don't know him? 
if I don't know what my Imam wants from me at this particular time, I have lost the connection. There are many people who have written about Imam Zaman, even in the time of the first 11 Imams. They have written books on Imam Zaman. So they knew Imam of our age better than many of us. They knew Imam of our age better than us. What they lack is that they didn't know our time. And therefore they didn't know what should they do at this time. Otherwise, they know Imam, they have written hundreds of pages about Imam. A person who lives in this time must be so understanding, so well versed and informed about Imam that he knows what his Imam wants from him. Sometimes your leader, your Imam asks you something to do. This is not very difficult. Inshallah, if you are obedient, when you know the Imam you know, has said this, you will do it. Inshallah, we are not one of those people that when Imam says, you know, do this, we say, no, I do it in my own way. Inshallah, we are not one of those people. But sometimes Imam doesn't ask you, either because he is in the state of labor, or because he wants to understand your level of understanding. He wants to test you. He leaves it to you to find out what you have to do. You know, in Du'a Ah, we have beautiful uh, distinction made between as ila iradate and al muntathirina le awamira. We say, oh Allah, please include me among those who implement what Imam commands and those who proceed to do what he wants. Al-Mumtathilina la Abadara means Imam has already issued an instruction, a command, a verdict, and they do it. As-Sadiqina ila iradate means they know the will of Imam. And they jump to do it. If you know, for example, your Imam is thirsty, do you say, I wait for Imam to ask me? If my Imam you know, says you have to bring water, I will bring. Otherwise, I don't do anything. When you know Imam is thirsty, you jump and go and bring water. When you have this level of understanding, that you know what your Imam wants, then you can say, I have knowledge of Imam of my age. And this is a big challenge. You have to have so much familiarity with the way that Imam thinks and looks at the things and decides that without Imam telling you, you do what he wants. There is a hadith which is very beautiful. It says that the people of Akhir zaman are the best people. Generally speaking, there are always exceptions. Maybe there was a person in early Islam who was better than most of the people at this time. But generally speaking, as a generation, the people who are in Akhir zaman they are best people. Why? Hadith says, because Allah has given them so much understanding that for them, غيبة and مشاهدة are the same. صارت الغيبة عندهم بمنزلة المشاهدة. For them, to see Imam or not to see Imam doesn't make difference. Hearing Imam or not hearing Imam doesn't make any difference. You know, imagine you are a teacher. Sometimes you have a student who are good, not bad, but they only study when you tell them. You have to tell them everything. Do this, do this, and they do it exactly. They are not disobedient, they are not lazy, but you have to tell them everything. 
Sometimes you have students that have so much understanding that if you have a problem for one hour you have to go outside, they do exactly what you want. Because they know your mentality, they are familiar with your style, they know what you expect from them, they do everything exactly as you want. These are the types of students that we need. People who are so well educated and trained that they do automatically the things that you want from them. The mu'mineen in akhir zaman are much better than mu'mineen in the time of the presence of imams because they did what imam wanted when imam was telling them what to do. Mu'mineen in this time, they do what imam wants without imam telling them. They don't have access to Imam, but they have so much understanding. Of course, this is for many who act properly, not those who are misguided. So you cannot compare a Mu'min who in this age and time acts according to the will of Imam to a Mu'min who in that time was acting according to the will of Imam. There is no comparison. These are the best people. There, there is a hadith that once the Prophet وسلم, prayed to Allah. He said, Allahumma laqqini ikhwani. Oh Allah, please enable me to meet my brothers. I want to meet them. His companion said, aren't we your brothers? The Prophet said, you are my companions, my ashab. My brothers are those who come in Akhir Zaman, who believe in me without seeing me. You are my companions and you have your position, but my brothers and sisters are those who come in Akhir Zaman, they believe in me without seeing me. This is very important. This person has not seen the Prophet, has not seen Imam, but MashaAllah, so much understand that he does everything according to the will of the man. Okay, now the question is, how can we make sure that we are not confused? How can we make sure that what we do is what really Imam wants? Because sometimes people think they are doing something nice, something you know good, but indeed they are harming. We have many cases. Even we have among our own community, people who do things and they think Ahlul Bayt will praise them, but they are harming the school of Ahlul Bayt. How can you be sure that you are doing things properly? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ حَلْ أُنَبْبُؤُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Shall I tell you who are in the greatest loss? Who is in the greatest loss? A person who doesn't believe? Is he greatest loss? No. A person who believes and he thinks that he is doing good things, but he is missing the points. Their efforts are misguided. Sometimes a person is misguided, sometimes his efforts are misguided. You know, he's a woman, but his actions are not in the good direction. He makes efforts, but these are misguided. But they think they are doing good things. They think that they are going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they meet Allah, Allah is angry with them. So, how can we avoid this? We don't see our Imam, we don't have access to Imam, and everyone who claims that I have access to Imam is a liar. So, how can we then make sure that we understand Imam properly? There are several things to help. One thing is that Imam is not visible to us. 
we don't have direct communication with Imam. But this Imam is a person in a series. Before him, there have been other Imams and Prophet and Lady Fatima. If you know them, you know this Imam. If there is a book which is in 14 volumes, the 14th is not available. But if you read all the 13 volumes before that properly, you would understand the mentality of the author. Because you are told that all will give the same direction. It's not that everyone who in one volume is acting differently. They all have the same principles, the same akhlaq, the same direction, but in different contexts. By mastering what has been said in those 13 volumes, you should be able to understand the last one. Unfortunately, normally, we know only a few pages of some of these volumes. <laughs> some of these volumes we don't know at all, and some of them we only know a few pages. For example, when it comes to volume 5, which is Imam Hussein, we only know the last few pages. And that is the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein lived for 57 years. Yeah? We know only about several weeks. What did he do in those 57 years? We don't know. Do you have a question? Yeah. So, our knowledge of those 13 volumes are very limited. Some of those volumes we have not even opened. What was Imam Hadi doing? I don't know. What, does, you know, what did Imam uh, Jawad you know, do? Very little. By mastering those 13 volumes, you would easily understand the 14th. But you have to master one thing more. You have also to master the context for the 14th, and that is your time, your age. Because it's the same spirit, the same character. But what is this character going to do in this context. You know, imagine there is a series about one person, once, for example, he was in a as a student in a school, once he was in university, once he was in, I don't know, for example, a place working. One volume is about his traveling, okay? So you have studied different contexts. Now, if you know this context, and you know the character, you have to be able to understand what that character is going to do in this context. Okay? This is what exactly we need. We need to know what Imam Mahdi Sharif would want from us to do in this particular context. And this is something which is never a stock. It's like, you know, a compass, like, you know, Qibla Nama. You know, if you have a compass, a Qibla Nama, that up to five minutes ago was showing Qibla correctly, but now it's broken, what do you do with that? So it's useless. Yeah? If it is broken, it's useless. You cannot say, oh, mashallah, for many years it was showing me the direction. No, it's now useless. A Shia who loses his connection with Imam, even if up to few days ago, a few months ago, he was all right, now he is like the person with the time of Jahiliyyah. Okay? It's a broken compass. It doesn't work now. Or like, for example, if you have a receiver, a radio, up to now it's okay, but now cannot receive the signals. What is the point? You don't say, oh, this radio was very good for many years, you know, was receiving signals. 
Now it cannot receive. If you can repair it, repair it. Otherwise, it's waste. You have to get rid of it. So, you have to master all the context that you go through. And I want to tell you that even we have a greater challenge. Not only we have to master our own age and know what is the requirement of this age, we have also to anticipate at least near future. Because for sure our Imam doesn't want us to wait for the things to happen and then find a passive solution. Our Imam wants us to have a vision of future and prepare ourselves for future. So as a Shia who lives in this time, who is deprived from receiving instructions from Imam, I should know what I have to do now so that our next generation would be able to stand on his feet and be respected, honorable, and at the service of Imam. It's a big challenge, very difficult. Sometimes, you know, even we don't understand our situation right now. And what we do is good for 30 years ago, 50 years ago. So, first thing that helps is to master and to know in very deep way the character and the conduct of previous hujjads of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imams, the Prophet, Lady Fatima. Second is to master our own time. And there is a hadith you might have heard that Al-Alimu bizzamanih la tahjumu alayhi al-lavabis If you know your time, Mistakes will not attack you. You will be protected from mistakes. And there is a third point. This is my last point. There is a third point that can help us. If we want to know what we have to do, we have to know the friends and enemies of Imam. We have to associate ourselves with those who are in the camp of Imam. Imam is not alone. You know, if you are working in an organization, is it enough to say, I know the boss of this organization, but not, no one else? I don't know who is his deputy. I don't know who are different, I don't know, for example, directors. I just know the boss. For example, I am working for United Nations. But I just know the general secretary. I don't know anyone else. I don't know how to contact them. I don't know what to do with them. I just know the general secretary. I'm waiting for him to ask me something. He will never ask you something directly. The order comes in hierarchy. And you have to know who are the team with whom you have to work. If you don't know your Shia brothers and sisters, and you don't know how to coordinate with them, then you never understand what your Imam wants from you. Therefore, in Ziyarat Ashura, we say something very important. We say, As'alullaha alladhi akramani bi ma'rifatikum wa ma'rifati awliya'ikum wa razaqani al-bara'ata min a'da'ikum an yaj'alani ma'akum fi dunya wa al-akhirah. I ask Allah, who has honored me by knowing you and knowing your friends, your followers. If you don't know followers of Imam, you don't know Imam in a sufficient way. And you must also know enemies of Imam who are working for the cause of Imam, who are working against the cause of Imam, so that you put yourself in the right position. If you have this knowledge, if you know Imam, if you know his awliya, if you know his enemies, then you can expect to be with Imam in dunya and akhirah. Therefore we say, أَنْ يَجْعَلَنِي مَعَكُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ
And this is helping us to get ready for the discussion inshallah tomorrow that I'm going to talk about the community and how this community must be kept together. Without being member of community, we will not find our way. It's very, very unlikely that as an individual we can survive. But if we are together, it's impossible to go a wrong direction. If the whole community is together, they will never go astray. But if we are divided, for sure, they cannot all be on the right direction. Because the truth is only one. The right path is only one. How can you have tens of voices and they all say, you know, we are with the Imam? If you have one voice, all Shia community together, for sure, that is what Imam wants. Imam salam himself said لو أن أشياعنا وفقهم الله لطاعته على اجتماع من الأمر If our Shia that may Allah give them tawfiq to be obedient to Allah if they were united والوفاء بالأحد and they were keeping their promise and they were loyal to the covenant that is between us and them, لَمَا تَأَخَّرَ عَنْهُمُ الْيَوْمُ بِلَقَائِنَا The blessing of meeting us would not be delayed. Why we are de no, not able to have Imam and Imam is not coming? Because we are not united. Inshallah, we'll explain this inshallah tomorrow. So, I just pray that inshallah Allah makes our generation a generation that has so much understanding and so much free from selfishness that inshallah we work together as one body as different cells and organs of one body as the prophet said that mu'mineen are kajasad and wahid we must be like one body you have different organs you have eye you have ear you have tongue you have hand foot but all must be one body. If that body is formed, then the life which is Velaya can be there. If these organs are separated, then there cannot be life of Velaya. We are dead. We think we are alive, but we are dead. Inshallah, Allah makes our generation honored by having this understanding and commitment. And this is your role. And without any exaggeration, without any kind of, you know, tarof, as we say, sisters have great role. I think what you can do for changing our generation and next generation cannot be done by men. You are, alhamdulillah, at such a high level of understanding and commitment that, inshallah, if you decide to change the community, you can. The role of mothers, the role of sisters, the role of wives is so important that men can never resist, maybe exceptionally. You can find few exceptions always. But if you want to have good children, if you are going to have good husbands, good, I don't know, brothers, you should count on the ladies. The ladies have a great role. And Alhamdulillah, we see that everywhere we travel, our ladies, our sisters have more interest, they are more determined to learn, more determined to practice. And Alhamdulillah, they have lots of skills. So I really count on you. And Inshallah, if you get together and you know share these ideas and try to practice and start with your family and your I don't know students or whoever is in your access, inshallah this becomes a culture. No success can be made in large scale without participation of women. Our enemies want to use the women issues against Islam. But it's quite opposite. This is our 
best opportunity. This is the best thing that we have in Islam, that we have women who are women, who are committed, who are determined. Alhamdulillah, they have good understanding, good skills. You can change the whole world. So I very much count on you and pray for you, inshallah, you pray for us.